go ahead and call to order the um, Economic Development Committee meeting for 9-15-20. Um, in attendance, we have myself, uh, Mr. Eric Donardo, Mr. Eric Thompson, and our law director, Keith Moore. Um, hopefully, James um, is just running a little bit late and can be still be here. Uh, we wanted to... Let's talk first about digital signs and just kind of get that out of the way. Okay. Um, the the gentleman texted me today that from um, Ad Exposure yeah. that came and presented. I wanted to just check with you guys, see if you had questions, uh, concerns. He he texted me today, said he wasn't going to be able to to make tonight. And um, actually, I think it would be better suited if. You know, if we're not going to go ahead and do an ordinance for it, um, probably would be better served in committee of a whole for everybody to to discuss. It's but, uh, it seems it we covered. I mean, it covered not just those digital signs, but also potential for updated bus stops and things as well. Yeah, what well, proposed they, they normally go either <clears throat> with the bus stop. Or they're right there close to the bus stop. Okay. And um, there's X amount that are digital and then X amount that are just static. Got it. When I had a Zoom call with him, he went through and um, we were looking at different locations. And they're primarily the busy corners, intersections where there is a bus stop already. Yeah, there was, they were in the, um, the PowerPoint that he... What's that? They, they were all included in the PowerPoint that yeah. you sent. Yeah. And uh, so it's uh, it's a neat thing. Like you said, after two years, I mean, it's free. We don't, we don't pay anything. We don't pay for installation. We don't pay cost of the sign or anything. Mm -hmm. But we get to advertise uh, on there whenever the city wants to put a message of some sort. We can, uh, we can add to that. Um, and after two years, once they have accumulated their cost, then we start splitting the profits. And at now, minimum, why, we get... Why, sorry to interrupt. Uh, go ahead. Why, why two years? It seemed to suggest that it was a dollar figure. I think he had a million sunk in. We, he would, yeah. But that was he an was, estimate? Yeah. He, yeah. He, they're, they're estimated it would take about two years for them to recoup all the cost, at which point we're then guaranteed... Uh, yeah. We would profit share 50-50. But they had a threshold. But there was a, a, at least guarantee of we would get like forty or 41000 a month. Now, if we did that, I mean, this is obviously out for discussion what others think. Um, because those are on the, you know, w w they're on the streets and by the bus stop, stuff like that. I would say that we would, we would designate those funds to like a streets. Uh, fun or something sure. like that instead of just being used willy-nilly um, mm -hmm. just to be able to that way we at least have some money in there to do some type of repair you know whether it's the repair like uh, the mayor's talking about where we mill down some of the bus stop areas right, right. now put in the concrete those kind of things you know it could be as little as that or as grand as if there is, you know, a lot of real good money that comes through on that, you know, that that just gives us additional months or that's money that we could use as matching and for grants. And stuff like I that. think um, uh, when he left and, you know, this is a committee, so we're just kind of like ideating, I suppose. Yeah. I think when he left, I said, is that is what he said actually going to take place from a financial perspective? And I imagine even if... That was two years. I was picking at, at you because I thought that that was pretty aggressive. That it assumed quite a lot of ad space to happen mm -hmm. pretty quickly and pretty pervasively. And it would take kind of the full gamut of products that we would get. Even if that was the case and it took two, four, six years to pay back, then the potential, I suppose, financially is still net good to us. So I suppose the only thing that we're really in my head that I'm really concerned about is what does this look like uh, 
is that is a digital sign or a digital butt at the bus stop replacing the ads that are already there because there's already kind of bus stop benches anyway making them digital is that cool and attractive or does that look cheap crappy it might be bad in five years sort of thing and that's the where my head goes with this stuff because financially even in the worst case scenario i'm going okay doesn't i truly don't think i'm gonna have to pay anything and then maybe even if he's wrong it takes six years mm -hmm. still eventually get some money right so financially it's probably a good play it's more in my head around what's this going to look like in a couple of years is this going to look good or is this going to look junk right. um, and that's what i'm weighing up and the powerpoint did look just so people on tv i don't know if everyone got it because he didn't get to present it did look pretty cool um, but I imagine that's intentional. He's selling us products, so, mm -hmm. okay. Right. But that's where my head was in all this. The signs themselves, I think that, I believe there's some downtown, because mm -hmm. uh, these were initially gonna be, like, really the whole streetcar route. Yeah. And uh, so a lot of that didn't, you know, ended up panning out. And so they, uh, they didn't um, put them all in. So I think that there are a couple down there. They're, um, they're vertical uh, signs. Um, and um, so you're right. But I mean, the way, the way he stated the contract would be, would be after two years, we at least start getting 40,000. Yeah, that's, he said regardless. Yeah. It was after you start. But after they do recoup reporting, everything. Even if they haven't paid off there. Oh, okay. thanks. So then yeah. after that, then once, once they, they pay off their investment, yeah. then you get the 50 50s. So, I mean, it's, uh, again, we're, it's probably good. I mean, we're going to get money. It's just if we want, if it, we want that kind of thing. Yeah, if, if $40,000, yeah. which is a lot of dough for some cool projects, um, if it's good. I mean, if, if people aren't going to like it or if they think it's yeah. Does our kitschy. Does our sign code allow for digital boards? It doesn't really allow for, let's see, the prohibited would be animated. It depends on what exactly that means. You know, there's um, cabinet, or let me see, uh, rotating, multi prism, indexing, animated. I'm not, I mean, a lot electronic messaging centers are, are allowed in the general and central business districts and manufacturing districts. Um, uh, so, uh, and and I don't know, to be honest with you, is the, looking at um, exempt signs include signs owned and sponsored by various governmental entities, including the city. I'm not sure that these would be owned and sponsored. I don't think they'd be owned and sponsored by the city. No, they'd, they'd be owned and sponsored by them. Yeah. We just get to use. So, I, I, I think that the, they're standard <clears throat> boards where they're just a light. The, the backlight signs, mm -hmm. um, you see those everywhere yeah. as part of, it, it wouldn't be any different than the signs that are on our bus stops now, except they would be lit up. I mean, it sounds those, better. Those, it's the, <laughs> it's the, the digital, I mean, because it's basically a large TV standing on its end. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I assume it can play video. I'm sure it displays stills too, but the idea is that it rotates through multiple advertisements, which helps make it profitable because it's not just one thing. It's multiple right. things on there. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm with Mr. Nardo. It just becomes an issue of, of uh, is that the kind of signage we want on, on basically Montgomery Road mm -hmm. uh, going through our city? Yeah, I mean, part of the, the justification for the sign code is traffic safety. And so that would be a question is if you're driving down Montgomery Road and there's a TV flashing, <laughs> you know, how awesome is that going to be as you look over at that and hit somebody? Yeah. <laughs> right. Depends on what's playing, I guess, huh? Um, so I think what, what I need to do is, is reach back out to him, see about putting this in a committee of a whole, um, and see if he could get us some better images or be able to present uh, with a, wh where we could actually see what those signs look like, you know, both maybe day and night, hopefully, what they look like. Um, and then, you know, what are the actual dimensions of the whole things? Um, because, you know, where he's wanting to do is, is pretty much, 
you know, mostly Montgomery Road, but there's some on Smith. There's some over by Rookwood. Um, there's I'm trying to think where else. I think they really follow bus route areas. Yeah, it's pretty much a bus route area. And uh, obviously, those are going to be high traffic areas anyway. Right. I think that's, um, I think it's great that committee of whole probably will give it more exposure and him coming and presenting on a screen about yeah. the screens, I think would be good so the TV can see it for yeah. folks at home. Um, but because this kind of has the same vibe uh, as on a very minor level as the murals in that it makes, the difference being it, this makes money, but the, what we're asking ourselves, I think collectively is, do people want it here? Because mm -hmm. everything else probably ticks the box of yes, do we want it here? And if people see it on TV, I suppose we, I, I would want either us or Keith, or not Keith, Ken, um, to try to encourage folks to come and speak on it in the same way that we heard 19 people come and talk on murals because mm -hmm. I, it's the input part sure. that I suppose really matters in this particular mm -hmm. case because the sales pitch is probably easy from a financial right. perspective. I agree. I, I, I totally agree with that. And the fact that, you know, every, sometimes we, we try to somewhat get pressured by saying, but it's free to you and then you're going to make money. It doesn't necessarily mean that our people want it, right. you know. So uh, I, th I think that's, you know, probably the best idea is put it in a committee with whole, let us get a little bit more information from him, um, and then to be able to present, um, hopefully we can get the setup to where he can present, and we'll go back that way. Sound good? Mr. Bonds, do you have anything? Um, yeah, I would just say that, uh, you know, I mean, the ability, I think it's good that you know we are going to get that forty thousand at the at starting year three, no matter what. But I mean, personally, I mean, there's no, I mean, there's no guarantees that it makes it to year three. Like maybe the company cuts it after year two. I, I don't know. So I wouldn't mind seeing pushing back on him, saying, um, you know, until it's paid off, like the city gets like twenty percent of the ad revenue, and then once it's paid off, right, that investment's paid off with the other thirty percent that the city gets. A larger percent, or something where the city starts getting stuff on year one, year two, so we can tell our citizens, look, we're the first couple of years we'll be getting twenty thousand, thirty thousand a year, but you know after that it'll be more. I, I would be curious what he would say. I mean, we can talk to him on the mm -hmm. committee, the whole about that. He might say, no, we really need to pay it off. He might say, well, we could probably yeah. just adjust the terms a little bit. So, and the other thing I would say is, if he they don't, I would almost want to see a minimum amount. For uh, using like using the sign, for example, if somebody wants to actually like buy ads on it, like he's giving us this projection that it can make you know the city was it two hundred thousand dollars a year after it's paid off? Is that was that something was that, like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, okay. Make sure I was in the right ballpark there from that presentation. Uh, my concern would be, well, what if it's lower, right? And we're selling these things for dirt cheap. Uh, in my opinion, I would rather the city just get additional space to put additional messaging. Like if there's, for some reason, like they can't sell ad space or there's just not enough demand, they just give the city additional space. Like don't sell it for bottom price, barrel prices. Let the city just have additional public messages. Like, and it could just be like, you know, fun messages. Like it didn't have to be anything like selling anything at the city, but uh, I don't want people to be subjected to ads if, there's not actually good money being made from them for their benefit at the, you know, at the city. So just two things I was kind of thinking about in my head. Both of them could be, like, not really that important or that big of a deal, but just letting you know. And I, th I think that's a good, a good question would be how much, how many ads do, does the city get, you know, per board? Because so, each board is two-sided. So, yeah. it's, so what I was reading about is that on the not on the digital ones, so the static ones we wouldn't get any, right, because they're a static, board, right? right? Yeah. But on the digital ones, I was reading that it had eight slides, and the city would get one of those slides. So, I mean, we could it could literally be a message that says "Welcome to Norwood," right? Or it could be a message advertising, uh, you know, the police and fire night out, right, down at the Waterworks Park, or it could be advertising the new basketball course, wh whatever it is. Um, which is great. I think it's awesome that we would, you know, I think that's a, a great part of component of it. However, I just, like I said, I just 
I would want, if, we're, if they're just not going to be able to sell all of seven spaces that are the sellable spaces, then I would say, I would love something in there just saying, hey, let the city have another spot or another two spots and, mm -hmm. and rotate that in. So. Right. Yep. And does that message have to be <clears throat> the same message throughout the city? Oh, I think they're, <coughs> there's I, a per I, board, so. I think they're, they would, it, to me, it seems the way the system's like designed, the way that this presentation's being made. I would think if a company near Rookwood wants to target the ones near Rookwood, right. they probably could. No, I mean, as far as the city, the city's message. Oh. Could we target, you know, that the ones that are maybe close to Rookwood and, you know, we talk about speeding or something on those and something else we're saying, hey, pool passes are available. That's uh, a, that's you know, a, yeah, that's does great. each sign yeah. have to have the same city message or does he, can we put a different message on each of those signs? wherever you know we get that yeah that'll be a good question for the yeah. when we talk to him so great okay all right i'll reach back out to him and um and tell him that we're going to put in a committee hole out uh, ken didn't call one yet did he the other night he's waiting for a few more meetings to come out at the end of september and october and into october because mm -hmm. the intent is to do the doubling up that some of us including me uh like yeah we did it today find it pretty successful. I yes. heard a few people echo that sentiment. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, at any time that we can double up, it's going to be better. But um, OK, so hope well, hopefully we can do it either the end of the month or the beginning of the month and yes, get a, a double up on one and, and kind of get that moving. So all right, I'll reach out to him in regards to that. Uh, next, we want to do kind of hopefully be able to finalize um, the issues with the mural uh, ordinance. Um, so let's start by uh, Mr. Moore. You you gave us a few different definitions from around the country as far as what the definition is for murals. Um, you have any other comments on these or? Um, well, I. I I, I thought actually uh, a large part of that was uh, because of Ms. Gary uh, when she came to the, the council meeting that seemed to be one of her. And she and I have kind of gone back and forth on a couple of things on that. It's, it's the idea is to get it as tight as we can, um, to make it as clear and, and to steer away from what might be constitutional issues. So it's the, back to the, the, the distinction that commercial speech has less constitutional protection than non commercial. So to make sure that this is art, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about art. We're not talking about selling anything. Um, and I just, these are just some samples of what I thought were, this is okay language in all of these. I will say that I don't think any, well, there's, you go into the details of actual the ordinances behind the definition. And some of these are just, I'm just, I cannot believe they're still on the books, quite honestly, that they're, they're that, no, you can't do that. Um, I guess they've not been challenged. So. Uh, but just some idea if the, if the committee had any, if not, I can, I'll work on maybe tightening up, add a couple of things. I think Eric had, a, you looked at a couple of, before the meeting started and mm -hmm. yeah, I'm trying to think what, like painting or artwork uh, and the, the concern of painted or attached to the exterior of the wall to, to, to make cl clear that a stained glass window, like replacing a window with a stained glass or replacing one stained glass with another does not run afoul of this. It's not pull it into this because it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be governed under the sign code anyway so mm -hmm. you don't want to have to get a permit for that you have a copy of what you're looking did you send oh, oh yeah, yeah i'm sorry there are consequences <laughs> i think uh this is like i'm i was sort of hoping um, and I don't even know if it's possible because that's the point of a discussion. But I was sort of hoping if there was, like, in this a sentence that says, if you add this, it would really put us in a stronger position. Because, um, and the reason I, I'm kind of asking for a, just tell me the answer sort of thing is because I, I, I don't know if, I heard you say it, is I don't know if you're ever going to get 100%. No. It's the vibe I was sort of, getting from the past meetings right you're never 100 percent protected so if that's the case and i'm at 60 percent protected and then i also hear that 
and other definitions are at 40 or 20 percent protected and they're not being challenged i'm kind of like well how how do we get good enough do you know what i'm saying and then and then then it's kind of going well then just tell me what's good enough um and i'm probably going to be cool with it because i don't know any yeah. i'm not i wasn't challenging it before and i'm probably not going to challenge it now sort of thing and I understand that. I just don't know of a controlling court case that said this language is good. And that's yeah. until you get that, there is no definitive answer is the hard part. Sure. This first one from Palm Springs, um, I mean, it, it seems to be, you know, a mural means a painting or artwork temporarily or permanently affixed to a building wall, freestanding wall, or fence, which can be seen from the public right of way and is distinguished from signage that is uh, that it does not advertise a business, commercial endeavor, or product sold or offered on the site or off site. Because that's I think one of the things we need to make sure is that people realize that you know Coca Cola can't just get with somebody and throw something up. So, you know, if it's if, yeah, if there's any type of advertisement in it, then that's a sign. Mm -hmm. And then they would have to get. Right. And that's, things. yeah, both Vicki and I kind of like that one. That, that was a pretty good definition. Does that handle her specific example of the state of the window? I think so, yeah. It's because it's it's um, affixed to a building wall. We can put it on the outside of a building wall. That's why there's other language in some of these sure. that may be to resolve. Because I, I don't think Palm Springs is looking at that. I will say Palm Springs is one where, okay, this is the definition of a mural. But as you get into their actual code, in order to get mural approval, because you have to get it, um, you submit it along with your color scheme because they regulate how many colors you can have in a sign or a mural. Um, and it goes to an arts review committee and the planning commission and they prepare reports on whether they think it's okay and then it goes to city council for their approval. Wow. And I know that's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> We, they never get anything done that way. Oh, and there's no dissent to the to neighboring property owners uh, for their comments on it. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, but the definition of mural is pretty good. I like yeah. That, you know. <laughs> yeah, but then their their procedures afterwards yep. are pretty, pretty stringent. But I think that shows. I mean, I think what you're saying there though shows that, uh, as kind of echoing Mr. Donardo's point about you know. Potentially, there's going to be risk, but I think I think there's a lot of laws out there that potentially could be challenged in many different cities and and haven't been yet. And not that we don't face that risk, but I I am appreciative that it seems like we are taking every effort to uh, to make this right. Uh, on that note, though, uh, did we need to talk about uh, the part with the school district uh, and city-owned parks? Yeah. Okay. So. But yeah, just, just before you get, just to want to talk about one of the, another yeah. aspect of the risk, because the real risk, I mean, there are people that might file the ACLU, there are people that might file civil rights complaints, um, and one way to alleviate that risk is to pull non-commercial speech out and make it freer than commercial speech, which is kind of what this does, um, because you can't discriminate against non-commercial speech and allow commercial speech. It's not as protected. Another way, another potential class of people who would challenge it are people that want to put up billboards or want to put up commercial signage. And they can come in because it's a First Amendment challenge and say, because this part of it is unconstitutional, which doesn't apply to what I'm trying to do at all, then you need to, the, the, the code is unconstitutional and you need to take out the part that's not. And the way this has been set up is that we can delete the mural part altogether and really not affect any of the rest of the code. So we're not in risk, we're not at risk of the billboard company comes in, challenges it because somebody can't put a political sign in their yard under the code. And so the whole code goes away because there's no way, no good way to take that out. And right. then we're unregulated till we can pass a new one and they put up billboards during that time. So that's the other potential. I mean, the way we've structured this, I hope, it makes it easier to, to slice this part out of it if there is a problem with it. But I'm assuming if somebody files a lawsuit, we'll just say, okay, fine, we'll change it. And 
you know, and avoid all of that. But it, we'll see. Exactly. Especially if whatever they bring up is new information we had, we just completely didn't consider. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, that you give us the opinion that they're probably going to win. It will. Great point. Thank you for change. I mean, that mm -hmm. seems to me like a yeah, pretty because it's going to work out. <clears throat> so, but I do want to talk about the school district one because well, I'm let's wait. Let, let's oh. can we find this yeah, finalized kind of like sorry. Sorry. no, you're good. Uh, let's. You. Let's kind of come to an agreement on um, the closest that we like for a, for a, a definition to be able to give to the law department for them to then put it in our words if they need to you know make a couple changes or something like that slight changes. But I mean, are you guys good with this first one, or uh, is there a line or you know things you want added or removed? I mean, my only question would be because the, the, my original thing was that we're talking about paintings. We're painting a wall. But then at the, one of the committee meetings, I think it was Eric was, or maybe it was in the draft you did, it was like, or mosaic. Yeah. And so I don't know how, yeah. if we want to limit it, if, if the committee wants to limit it to just paintings or are mosaics counted or uh, any artwork is, is you know i just i'm just not sure on that but, so well this what, would what i actually liked about the the second one was it, it it defined it as something that's painted on or attached to exterior wall okay. when you get that or attached into there there are lots of different techniques for doing murals uh painting is only one of them there's uh you can do live it, walls and do it the, like the live ones where they use you fix shrubbery and brush. Yeah, you can do that. You can do kind of gets attached. Uh, you can do the mosaics. You can do um, like like actual printed on paper and then and then basically varnished to mm -hmm. the wall and it becomes a, a semi permanent. Yeah. And then, so there's all kinds of ways that you can do it. What I like about that is it's it defines it as being attached or painted. So the attached covers those other kind of mediums, uh, and it also points out exterior walls, which I think covers off on the. Would the, the uh, attached or windows windows could we could we use the the term attached or painted or I mean uh, attached or does artwork in that first one where it says means a painting or artwork or we or could we make that an art attachment? You see what I'm saying? Does artwork would artwork not cover that? I, like, I think it does. When you say mosaics, the mosaics are got to be painted, and then they're affixed to the wall. So, I'm looking at that. That's painted. You know. <laughs> that's the way I would look at it. But yeah, I mean, I like number one as well. The first one as well, personally. Um, I do. So I do think we should just be careful on this, and we might want to just consider just all the ramifications of expanding it from a painted something that's painted, because I still don't even know exactly all the ramifications of all the different things that could. Be considered artwork and temporarily or permanently affixed to a building. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'm a little bit concerned with that. I will say that in the renderings for the playing card company that they showed, their mural was not, according to the way it looked in the picture, it was not necessarily, it didn't look like they were painted on the side of that, the parking garage. It looked like it was hanging on something or it was, I don't know if you saw the rendering. Yeah. It's very, very much just a temporary render. I mean, it's not necessarily what's going to be there, but. Um, I, I do think this is relevant in that sense because, again, that would probably then very much be allowed if um, we were to expand the definition. But again, I just, you know, kind of looking to, you know, Eric's far more, uh, I think, the, 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 the biggest artist on council. Yeah. I mean, can you give any other examples of what, like, I just can't think of a place where I've seen artwork permanently or uh, temporarily attached to a building that wasn't painted other than a few of the examples that you already gave. Is there anything that you could think of that might be like... There's, um, there's one downtown. Um, I, I could find a picture of it for you and show you later. But it's actually um, uh, what they did. This is a very famous artist, a worldwide artist. Um, it's a portrait, full wall. What they do is they plaster the wall. And then he comes in and chips off pieces of the plaster. So there's actually no painting on the wall at all. Okay. But when you look at the what appears to be chipped paint on a wall you see it's a, an amazing portrait of a person's face okay um that's a, that's in downtown cincinnati as i said there's the there's the the kind of large-scale printing that um 
or or it's, it or it doesn't not even necessarily printing, but you could you could paint on paper, and then basically paste it to a wall. Those uh those aren't quite as permanent as a painted wall, but they do last quite a while. Uh, the the the, the um, shepherd. Uh, Shepherd Fairy Arts that that went up all around town uh, three or four years ago. He's the guy that did um, the Barack Obama Hope poster. Okay. He had several murals all around town um, done in that style. Okay. And um, then they're just sealed. Huh? They're, that's put up, and then there's like a sealant that goes over to yeah. to keep it. Yeah. Those last for several years. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> depending on how. They're so, and, and mosaics, you know, that, that's another kind. Um, so, there, there are many ways to achieve a mural. I would say 95% of the time it's sure, probably sure. going to be painted on a wall. Right. Um, but there, there is the possibility that there could be another way of doing it. I think even the one, um, the mural in Pleasant Ridge, I think, has some 3D texture to it. Okay. Uh, you know, the one I'm talking about that you can see from... Right there at Kennedy? Uh, I think so. That's it's got the flowers. Yeah. The flowers, yeah. That's got some those, some actual texture put into it to pop those flowers. So there's something there besides paint. Okay. So that's that's what I'm trying to... So where it says painting or artwork, temporary or permanently affixed... I believe that Ooh. covers all that. Okay, good. So then one sounds like at this point, again... <clears throat> As Mr. Bonzel alluded to, this is probably, since this is, you know, something new for us, we're probably going to have to come back and tweak some things um, here and there. But it looks like this particular definition from Palm Springs would be a good one for us to at least start with. Everybody good with that? Yes. I'm good? Yeah? Yes. Yes. Eric, okay. Mark that one, Mr. Moore. <laughs> All right, so then... Uh, no, I just, I'm just thinking, because I, I just wanted to add, I was going to toss in there uh, from Tucson, I was going to toss in non-commercial. So mural means a non-commercial painting or artwork, temporarily or permanently affixed to, and I was going to add the exterior surface of a building wall, freestanding wall, or fence. So, cool. I could probably do more, but we want to move on. So, I think interrupt too many words. You can spend the entire term. Yes. Continuing to. Exactly. All right, Mr. Bonzel, you had um, the next thing you kind of wanted to make yeah, sure we. Uh, yeah. So. Um, one of the items I think that uh, Mrs. Gary brought up to me, or has, I don't know if she brought it up publicly or privately, but that specifically calling out the Norwood City School District uh, could potentially be, like, as an entity uh, to allow murals uh, may potentially, you know, violate some, you know, concerns there. Uh, I think potentially we could reward that. Uh, and by the way, too, there's no, I, there, I have heard nothing from any school or the school district about wanting a mural. Like this is not about anything that's planned. It's literally about, I think there could be some cool projects like to put it maybe on the side of one of their, uh, one of their buildings where the students actually get to help design it. And I, I can just imagine some pretty cool projects uh, that could come out of this. And I figured that we might as well just tackle the situation now uh, and not have to come back later. So I was thinking potentially we could change it to, and Mr. Moore, please uh, respond if you don't agree, but, uh, you know, any property great, used as a school for more than 100 students. Uh, and I felt like that doesn't call out the school district. If there's a charter school that moves in, that they would then qualify, right? It's not just specific to the public school. Uh, so I didn't know, Mr. Moore, if you thought that we could uh, do that. Um, I'm going to ask how many schools have more than 100 students. Right. I mean, I would say right now there's five that uh, I could think of off the top of my head. So potentially there could be a six, depending on how North Norwood's used. But I don't think they have. One. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that would in North, North Norwood, or I don't know how many kids are at um, um, Immaculate Conception. 
Yeah, that, um, mm, that's a good point. For know, I, I, that's the question. It's like if it's like if you pick it out as like <clears throat> someone who you know on a house that is 15 feet north of waterworks. Yeah. I mean, if you make it that specific, it can only be those. Then you're kind of getting to the same thing. Yeah, it's not specifically to exclude. I mean, maybe we could say greater than 50. Uh, I mean, what it is trying to exclude is like places where a preschool might pop up, right, or like a expanded daycare or something where they might uh, that's basically that was my goal is to kind of keep it at actual school buildings you know mm -hmm. um but yeah no i mean if you think it should be 50 maybe 50 is mm -hmm. is a much more reasonable number that kind of achieves some of the policy objectives but then also doesn't overly exclude private schools that like immaculate conception well the question is what is a policy objective then policy objective is to for me um uh, is to allow uh schools to be able to put murals on the side of their building That's in residential districts because they can't they could in commercial anyway under either one of these yeah so i guess that would be the case yeah okay. and then the, because my thinking was if that's the goal then then um actually it's just for the second option like but um for uh the buildings that are within district zone for residential use currently occupied by a con permitted or conditional Commercial or school use was my thought, but that would include uh, the preschools. Would include the, the really small ones as well. But that was my my thinking about what might be a way to get there. Um, but again, there's not been a rush. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I school. So yeah, and the only preschool that I can, I mean, I might be wrong about this. The one that I can think of because I used to live right there, but it's the yeah. other Montessori. That one's already in a neighborhood business district, so I don't see them necessarily. It wouldn't affect them either way. Mm -hmm. um, if they wanted to have one up on, yeah, they would. They would not be affected. So, uh, yeah, I think that would. I mean, I don't know what the rest of the committee thinks. To me, that sounds fine. What well, what's what was your actual? Repeat what you were saying. Well, it it, it takes off on the one that's. Uh, in a residential district that's currently being used for commercial purpose is to add currently being used for commercial or school use so that would be ordinance one yeah the only yeah. thing about that is that because uh, it is something that i think that we could all be unified on to have this in both ordinances i'm not don't want to push it though that's, mm -hmm. um, but we could essentially do the same take out the commercial part and just put the school part in uh for the option b so it, and then the other thing that uh, by not being able to say the Norwood City School District, um, it does take out sports stadium, like sporting facilities. So specifically, I guess we look at Shea Stadium because uh, that's owned by the school district, but it's not being used for a school purpose. Uh, my intent originally was to include that as well when I said yeah. Norwood City School District. Could we... Is there any, yeah, do we have anything creative that we make up for that one? And we, we don't have to even, again, I'm not trying to yeah. burden us down, and I'm fine if we want to move on, but uh, it just seemed to make sense that potentially to allow... I really don't have any problem with schools, even as a broad definition, per oh, No, but we, well, we would still do schools, but the thing is that the stadium doesn't count. Nope, as and so I was, gonna say, I was about to say, so is the stadium in a residential, or is it in a... It is, it's in yeah. an R, I looked at the other day. Uh, yeah. I think it's in an R2 district. What, um, what, about, what if you just said school properties? I think that was his first idea. Yeah. Right? The, yeah. Well, you can't do you that. You probably do. Yeah, I don't know. You're, you're, the problem there is you're picking the speaker. Is under the First Amendment, the government can't say James gets to talk publicly, but Mike doesn't. And that's essentially what you're doing. As you're saying the school district, the Norwood Public Schools, the Norwood City School District, they can say whatever they want. They can put up whatever they want. But... Uh, the general public can you know, but this this private school can, right? And Eric can't, but the school district can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an R one. It's the yeah, the thing. Um, because that's big enough that they could get what pretty much anything they wanted under the sign code square foot requirements. Anyway, I'm thinking you mean, they got a huge frontage, but but they still, they're still they wouldn't be allowed to have the mural because they're in an R one zone at the stadium, right? They'd be allowed to have a sign, though. Yeah. Oh, no, for sure. I mean, I mean, yeah, but it would be limited. So, I mean, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I don't know. And to be honest with you, I, yeah, I don't know if that's a school accessory use. 
Or if that's a commercial use, or I don't know, it's, I'm yeah, assuming it's his grandfather quite, now. If, but. if they have registered, I don't know if they have any registered trademarks at the school. I would think they do. I don't know if they do. Like, I don't know how that intellectual property works with, for a high school. Like, I'm sure that some high schools do, like, but I don't know how we do it. Long story short about it is I also wouldn't want them to be excluded from putting their own logo up at the stadium uh, in a mirror. That's probably a sign. Yeah, yeah, so they may not be able to do it with a mural then. If, I mean, uh, part of me thinks, uh, because there's no plans that yeah. we know of for any of this stuff, sure, sure. adding the schools, I thought, now I'm learning why you're saying schools and not Norwood schools or whatever. I think that's great. It gives us the option to vote on two different ordinances that meets the, the mark. We've defined the mural language. I think leaving the stadium out, it's kind of like, if the stadium wanted to put a big thing of you know, the logo or whatever it is, I imagine we can just kind of talk about it again in a year if that were really to be a plan. Okay, that's fine. I can, we'll drop the stadium part. So then the, uh, totally cool. The last one is city parks, because uh, city parks, uh, many of them are in <coughs> residential uh, districts. And so and some of them have some really ugly walls on the side of the restroom <laughs> buildings. Uh, so I think there could be some opportunity there. The, I was, Sign code specifically, uh, it may, like, so because this is being encompassed in the sign code, and the sign code excludes city owned, uh, city, I think city owned and sponsored signs, can potentially we just not even worry about the parks knowing that we can put them there? It's because it's a city property and the sign would be essentially a city sign because the city would allow. Because the, the city code. could, the city could then commission to have the bathrooms and all the the parks that have the the bathroom things they, they could have them commission paintings to be put on there without right. and they that would be excluded from this is that correct um that's a real technicality well the way i've got this written is that sections 1303 to 1321 don't apply to, like murals, they don't cover murals. And the exemptions from the sign code are in 1321.04. Um, so we're kind of pulling the city back into being governed by, especially when we say, oh, the ci oh, city owned buildings, but only city owned buildings in parks. So I had a thought on Which was so we can just exempt city owned buildings altogether, and that's easy enough to do. Because we really shouldn't be telling ourselves we can't put up a mural if, we, if the administration decides to put one up. Right. I'm well, thinking, unless, totally... unless you just don't trust them. And just, the, yeah, whatever that's... the administration happens to be will put up something you don't like. I trust this administration, I mean, but I <laughs> no, no. So, yeah, I think, I I think that makes sense. If we're allowed to do that, then I would just say do that and just leave that part out. Well, or no, I think he's saying that because we don't, no, we don't want to. We don't want to depend on the sign codes exemption for the mural part because you don't want to combine, you don't want to mix them up. So he's going to actually add another exemption. I would say into ordinance one and two, but I mean, I would defer to you. Yeah. Just saying city owned buildings. Right. Are just in the one version or in both? So explain what that exemption is again. Basically, the city owns a building, the city can put up a mural on it if yeah. they feel like it. Because there are buildings and it's our code, so we right. can do, you know. That's the logic anyway. Right. So do we have to state that in this? It's better <laughs> to state it than not. Just like in the zoning code, I mean, in the sign code, it says um, it exempts entirely signs owned and sponsored by the state, county, city, or public utility entities. Okay. And he's saying that the, re the reason why it's better to state it is because, again, you don't cross back over into talking about what's in the sign code when you're talking about murals for the city's exemption. Okay. Like, we don't depend on the sign code for the city to have the exemption. So we could put a sign up on if we wanted to, and because of that exemption in the sign code, so if we put it in the, the mural code, same thing. We, if, we, if we chose to do it, yeah. yeah, or the administration, I should say, chose mm -hmm. to do it. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, do we have something in there that uh, prevents somebody from 
profiting because because uh, if, if there's something up there that's promoting something that would be a sign and you couldn't do that but I'm just I'm just wanting to make sure that somebody doesn't go to I, I go to your building and say I will give you X amount of dollars over the next you know five years if you let me paint this sign or this mural up there is there um, I suppose the fact that you gave notice to the people you were supposed to give notice to and you went through the proper procedures that were put in place that even if one person is getting their $10 a month or whatever it is and the neighbors aren't, I guess you've already kind of understood that that was okay. It's independent because they, them saying yes or no, they're not getting the, the fee. Mm -hmm. So if they're all kind of expressing an approval, then you, you're fine. Are we okay with I, I, somebody? I, I, I just want to say this. I, I, is it, Eric may correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's this large group of artists who are willing to pay people for a canvas. Oh, I, I may I be wrong, too. Was, but there may be just, a big industry there. Yeah. I don't know, but I don't think so. Right. Uh, and I agree because anything <laughs> normally that you would think that would get painted that somebody would get paid for would be some sort of advertisement. And right. You can't do that. But um, it's it's possible. But I, 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 it's just and it's hard to see how anybody's getting taken advantage of in that. I, yeah. I'm just missing that. I just had a question about how this, again, I'm just like trying, I'm dreaming deep about this and I, we can keep this to like a minute. So what if uh, on the property, I guess, along Duck Creek, you know, the big wall that's, I guess, owned by the state of Ohio, uh, would, would somebody be allowed to like register to paint something on that thing, like a 20 by 20? If we add the language, uh, Signs, if we exempt sign, or murals owned, on property owned and sponsored by the state, county, city, or public utility entities, then that would be allowed under the sign code. You'd still have to get ODOT's permission. Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So are you going to use that, that same language then? Uh, okay. I think okay. that makes sense. Yeah. I, it makes sense to me. Okay. So they would have, to, in that case, say somebody wanted to do Duck Creek, they'd have to get ODOT and then our own approval? Well, well, you have to get both approvals. If we exempt, separate. if we okay. exempt basically stuff owned by the state, then no. It would just have to be ODOT. It would have to be ODOT's approval, yeah. Because it's their property. Yeah. Okay. Or you may want ODOT to have to get, you know, submit a permit, but I cannot imagine ODOT approving it without no, I can't either. somebody at the city, which makes sense. Um. And then what about um, allowing any type of copyrighted or trademarked depictions, de depictions, depictions, <laughs> Is that... the depictions? I don't, is that in here now? No, I'm no, just, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm asking uh, kind of everyone here if, um, do we allow, like, Anything that's you know trademarked um, and um, or copyrighted. I think a trademark might fall afoul of the definition of mural and make it commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, for copyright, the problem with that is that I don't know how we police that. Actually, for trademark, I don't know how we police that without doing a trademark search, but you can't do a copyright search. I, w I would say also there is the possibility that somebody would maybe want to do a mural. Um, they maybe got permission from an artist to do a copy of their painting on a wall. Um, that would be a copyrighted work. Okay. Um, but it's up to the artist to clear that, I think. Yeah. Not, okay. Not the code. That makes sense. 
And the good thing is that that does happen. That's not advertising a business commercial endeavor or no, it's not. Product yeah, sold. that's that's copyright, not trademark. Trademark is, I think, falls under advertising in any way yeah, you look at I it. I think that would yeah. fall under advertising anyway. Or trade, which would be, yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, and, and to be honest, I'm happy to let Disney enforce their own trademark. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. You know, and copyrights. Okay. <laughs> um, and then anything else on those type of ordinances? Um, and then, you know, before we send this back and uh, have it ready for Tuesday, are we good with the, uh, the Arts Board um, ordinance that that they drafted up for us? Everybody's good with that? Once I fix the math, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see any issue with it personally. Um, did, okay, so the thing. Oh, actually, I, the, the one question I would have is like, we've got three members. Yes, that's exactly. How many are appointed by the mayor and how many by council? I would almost want to make this simpler, and I, maybe we don't, maybe this is, going against the effect of it. But I would almost just say appointed by the mayor, approved by council. That way, there every, you go. Okay. I just think it's simpler because we're gonna have to figure out then on the first time we appoint is the first member, is the, the, the member that's appointed to a one year term, is that one appointed by council or is the mayor? And the one appointed to a two year term, is right. that, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's probably best that way. And plus trying to get seven guys to all, you know, jump on board and, and and suddenly everybody's got all these I mean if you've got somebody submitted to to the mayor and just say hey you know here's somebody that I'd recommend for the board and let him do it he appoints all the other boards and commissions yeah and if council says too like look we've we've got this person we want you know yeah. mr. mayor please like I mean I don't know I yeah. I think you're right okay so we'll just make them all and how many do we did we decide on there was it I three think it was or three? Because three. they would serve for three year terms. Yeah. So. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, I just want to just again just commend this committee for the the great work that's happened uh, and just the partnership really because I think this is you know a contentious topic and I feel like the. The way that we're leaving this, especially you know, with the two ordinances, but just being able to work together on it, I mean, I think it's a, a beautiful thing. So I appreciate that, Mr. Chair, for all the work you've done, and the law director as well for the yeah. work you've done on this. Well, I, I just appreciate all, all you guys. It, this has been obviously a very, very hot topic, um, and we've been able to sit here and, and disagree mm -hmm. respectfully. And just you know try to work something out to where we're going to have these two ordinances and we vote on them and we move forward um, that's the way things should work and uh, and I appreciate you guys' work on this I mean it has been grueling so hopefully uh, nothing else comes up and Tuesday we can have a vote on these and just move forward and again there's going to be things that we're going to tweak um, and probably make changes here and there because this is new for us and as we step down this journey we'll figure it out but uh, hopefully we can at least start on something anything from uh, the gallery I didn't say peanut gallery I just said gallery <laughs> uh, it's quite all right uh, Pastor Sonny James 1830 Hopkins Avenue uh, I am pleased that um, my eight-year-old daughter, who is very much a resident in Norwood, was able to come tonight and to witness as I piggyback um, what was just spoken, that it's really nice when we can come together and maybe agree to disagree but yet actually have an agenda, understanding that as you all have spoken tonight, it's very difficult or next to impossible to get 100% on anything. But I know as we shape our future as a community through the eyes of our children, it's important that they see us come together. And I want to applaud you all and I want the the residents in Norwood to see that um, 
we can come together and not have all, all things 100%, but if we just stay at the table together and we work together, and I have to say again and again and again to the Norwood residents, to our voters of this city, that when you look at the leadership, a lot of what happens in our community happens as a direct reflection of the leadership. And so I want to commend you all. I want to commend the leadership of this particular committee because as you all have echoed, this has been a, a really horrific topic. And uh, you all have done an excellent job addressing it. Uh, I commend the law department for having a lot of input and giving clarity so it's, it doesn't look like it's the blind leading the blind. We try to get some expertise or some wisdom uh, to the table. So I'm just excited that my eight-year-old could witness this so that as God launches her into whatever he brings her to in this community, that you all are mentors and you really help shape um, how she should do things as she grows. So I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, great job. Um, and again, uh, this committee, I just think it's awesome how you guys work together. So keep up the good work, guys. Good night. All right. Well, if, if nothing else, um, it, it's on anyone else's mind. We will now uh, send it to the law department for them to uh, work their uh, logistical fingers on and um, have the uh, the two ordinances plus the arts board ordinance for uh, Tuesday night's meeting. All right. All right. Call this meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.